Good afternoon. Can you guys hear me okay? All good? The sound is good? Thank you very much for being here this afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you here in beautiful Istanbul. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. And I was really pleased to be asked by the organizer to talk about data and specifically the role of data in creating a more engaging event experience. And for those of you who were at the session just before us, where Casper spoke about data, he talked about trust. We're gonna take trust as a given, right? That's one of the most important things is as an organizer, as an exhibitor, or as a visitor, you have to ensure that you're maintaining data integrity. But we're, that is a session in and of itself. So trust has to underpin all of this. What I'm gonna talk about is how data creates a more engaging event experience for the visitor, for the event organizer, and for ultimately the exhibitors. It's an incredibly important subject. And we, we used to talk in the industry a lot. About 10 years ago, there was always a session on how the event industry was going to potentially get disrupted by digital tools or by data. And what I'm really excited now as an event person is that we're not talking about that anymore. What we're talking about is how data can make it a better experience for everybody. So again, I don't know if you're from the agency side or if you're from the organization side or, or like me from a service supply side, it's gonna be something really important for all of you. Now, I don't know if I've come further than anybody uh, here, but, but this is my hometown. I know, I know you don't like the weather here in Istanbul today. It's five degrees Celsius. It was minus 50 in Chicago a mere couple of weeks ago. And that's where I'm based. Uh, I run GES's international business. Uh, and if you don't know GES, we are a global partner to some of the major corporates around the world. And we're known for a variety of things. It's everything from, as you can see here, our physical build and our logistical capabilities of getting events put on where we work with the organizer, to our creative network of designers based around the world, to what we're doing from a data point of view. And we're collecting data through the registration process as well as through a variety of other technologies that we have. I'm gonna show you a very brief 60 second video that shows you some of the great work that we do at GES and how data kind of touches all of that. You can see there some exciting event work and again data underpins everything that we're doing and I'll talk about that more uh, as we go through today. So experiential marketing is one of the oldest forms of marketing out there and it actually people think about experiential marketing being a relatively modern concept. It's actually centuries old. This is the Grand Bazaar in, in beautiful Istanbul here and it's a great example where people were coming face to face to create experiences, to conduct commerce, to barter, to trade. And markets nowadays are also completely social. This is Borough Market in London. It's, it's, they're completely social animals. They bring people together. It's a very tactile experience. It's, it's an experience. And that's ultimately the value that, that markets play in that experiential marketing place. Data underpins all of that. Right? Data is a, is, a, is, a, is a critical component of that. This is a show that we put on, um, it's called Money 2020. It's a FinTech show that's in, in Europe, in the US, as well as in Asia. And it's a great example of how 
face-to-face -face marketing has evolved based on data. It's, it's, it's put on by an organizer called Essential Events, and it's, it's really evolved from a typical trade show to one that's based on content, to one that's based on sponsorship revenue, and one that really is about creating an entire experience for the fintech community. Events have also really evolved, and you hear nowadays about festivalization of events. They've evolved into summits, they've evolved into experiences, they've evolved into something much bigger than where they often um, originally started. South by Southwest, this is the picture you're seeing here, is a great example. This is an event that's put on in Austin, Texas. It, it actually opens in a couple of weeks. It was originally about music and film and creativity. It's now really evolved into an opportunity for corporates to create brand experiences, uh, for people to uh, get much closer to brands that they like. And you can see that throughout many other examples. We just had in, in my country the Super Bowl, which started as a sporting event and now has really evolved into a corporate experience. The Champions League final is another example. The Olympics are, are other examples. All of these are truly experiential marketing opportunities and they create opportunities for brands to connect themselves to their eventual consumers. That's driving a change in economics of the industry. And you can imagine data is a critical part of that because without data, you don't understand pricing. You don't understand what's popular. You don't understand how to curate an event. So we're now seeing big changes in terms of the pricing mechanisms. In our industry, it used to be basically priced on a per square meter or per square foot basis. A show like this, every price was the same and the exhibitors would pay on a per square meter basis and that would usually represent 95 to 100% of the total revenue for a show. Shows are evolving now. You're seeing much more coming from speaker content like this particular show, Ace of Mice. You're also seeing more coming from sponsorship revenues. So you're seeing the entire industry, the economical base is changing. And what we're also seeing based on data is we're now able to really connect communities with brands, with iconic brands. And that's creating a lot of, uh, of, of great uh, opportunities for greater sponsorship, et cetera. Now, let me go to an analogy. How many of you have had, how many of you had an iPod? Right? How many of you had digital music? So it was very popular in 2001, right, when it was launched. And a lot of people talked about the iPod and digital music as being a complete killer of all analog forms of music. And it was. It was for a long time, right? This was the most popular way to consume your music. But it was missing something. So what has happened in the ensuing 18 years is you've seen a real comeback of vinyl as an analog form of music. And I don't know if there are any uh, record collectors here, but, but you're seeing more and more, not only old people who are used to it, but younger people who enjoy the tactile experience, who want to hold a record in their hands, who want to experience the cover art of a particular artist. And there's nothing better than dropping the needle on a piece of vinyl and, and hearing the music that you love. So it's a different type of experience, and it's coming back. But digital and data also underpins the tactile vinyl experience. So what can you do now, even if you like to listen to your records on vinyl? Well, you can search the internet and it can give you suggestions of other artists that you might like based on what you're listening to. From a social point of view, you can connect to other people who love that particular artist and engage with them on social media. And of course, there are many apps that you can log your music um, library onto. So there's a host of things that digital does to augment the analog experience. And I'm arguing we have the same thing going on in the experiential events business. Data and digital tools are augmenting that experience and, and it's making it a more, a more rich experience. So I'm gonna talk about effectively three things today. I want to talk, and, we, and this is how we really look at it, is there are really three major stakeholders in events. You've got the visitor, 
you have the event organizer, and you have the exhibitor. And what I'm going to talk about is how data creates more empowered engagement for the visitor, how it creates insights and opportunities for the show organizer to more proactively plan their show, and how it creates measurement and tracking opportunities for the exhibitor. So this is how data creates a more engaging event experience for these three really important constituencies. On the visitor side, let's start with the visitor side. There's really three key things that we look at and how the visitor's experience is enhanced through data. Number one is it gives them an opportunity to control the journey. I call this the three C's, by the way, just as a way, an easy way to remember it. It allows the, the visitor to control the journey. Secondly, it allows them to also contribute content themselves and to become a part of the show themselves and to make sure that the show is actually an evolving animal instead of a static beast. And then thirdly, it allows the visitor to create a community. And what we found at GES is that by creating a community that improves the engagement of the visitors, they're more likely to come back and it allows the event to last 365 days a year. So we're gonna talk through each one of these in turn. First of all, in terms of controlling the journey, there are many tools out there that allow you to control the journey as a visitor. So what you can see here in the, in the image behind me is somebody who's checking in to a digital touch point using a smart badge, near field communications. I happen to have one in my pocket. It's very simple, it looks like a normal badge, but it actually has an NFC sticker um, just based on the inside that is connected to the, to the visitor's registration information. What that allows them to do is to go around and to basically shop a show, to download digital tools, which could be anything from product sheets, it could be videos, it could be uh, contact information, anything really that can be downloaded digitally, the visitor can grab and go, changes the dynamics, it makes a show far more sustainable and green, but imagine the data exhaust that that creates. It allows the visitor to go back to their hotel and to understand what they've done at each step in the journey. And then importantly, and I'll talk about this later, it allows both the organizer and the visitor to understand what that visitor is interested in. So it allows them to really control their journey. Secondly, it allows, there's tools out there that create data flows that allow the visitor to control the, the content, right? they're actually part of the show themselves. So imagine a, a, a presentation like this, where you've got a tool, this is, this is done by a company called Glisser, which is one of our partners, but there are many other tools out there that allow audience interaction. So during a session, if you open the tool, you're able to vote on polls, you're able to download presentational material, you're able to make notes, you're able to share it via social media, and you actually then, as the visitor or as the audience, end up getting to be a part of the show. You're creating content that is then engaged with by other visitors, and that creates greater engagement for visitors. So that's another way that data creates a more engaging event experience. And then the third piece that we're talking about for the visitor is creating community. And what do I mean by that? There are a host of tools out there they're called social registration tools that allow you as a visitor to utilize your social networks and let people know that you're gonna be attending an event and also allows you to invite them. So if I'm connected with somebody, I can say, look, I'm going to Ace of Mice, I'm going to be in Istanbul from the, from the 20th to the 22nd, please join me. That allows you to create a community of like-minded individuals and to broadcast your presence at a particular event which then also creates really valuable data flows that can be analyzed. Because if they know that they're going to be people like me at the event, you can do more effective pre-show marketing, you can do more effective at-show meetings, and you can then do better visitor targeting for future events. So hopefully that makes sense. Those are three ways that data can really enhance the visitor experience at a show. Now moving on to the organizer. What does data do to allow the organizer to become more proactive? You can see here it's heat mapping. So once you know where a visitor goes on a show, 
And there's a variety of technologies. It doesn't just have to be something like this, which is near field communication. There are RFID applications, there's video technology. We're basically agnostic with regard to how we capture that information, but there's a variety of ways to capture that information to understand how people shop the show floor. What does that allow the organizer to do? It allows them to be much more proactive in planning the show experience and understanding where the hot spots are and where the cold spots are. It allows them to plan things like feature areas, concession, food and beverage, understand how long taxi lines are and how long people are waiting for certain things like that. So it allows the organizer to be much more strategic in how they plan the show experience. Secondly, it allows them to promote popularity. As I mentioned before, content is becoming ever more important part of events. And so if you understand how attendees and how the audience is engaging with speakers, what content they find popular, it is, allows you to be much more strategic about planning content that makes sense in the future. It allows you to create benchmarks. So as an organizer, if you understand, you're, you know, we're, we're, we're surrounded by, a, uh, by an exhibition floor here. If you understand which of these exhibitors here have had a good show based on the leads that they've captured and which ones have had a bad show, it allows you to be much more strategic in your discussion about trying to re-sign that exhibitor for a future period. Oftentimes, organizer salespeople just go barreling in with a, with a standard sell story that's not strategic at all. If you understand the type of show that people have had, the leads that they've captured, how effective the show has been for them in meeting their marketing objectives, you have a much better opportunity to then re-sign those exhibitors. And it allows you also to develop data-driven decision-making. And that could be everything from understanding what parts of the show floor are hot versus cold. It may allow you to do some variable pricing strategies, which we're seeing more and more from trade show organizers, a little bit less from event organizers. It allows you to make more informed decisions. So that's on the exhibitor side. That's how data creates a more engaging experience on events for show organizers. Now, finally, from an exhibitor perspective, why has marketing, why have, why have marketing budgets moved digitally? Why has the budgets of Google AdWords and Facebook, why have those exploded where traditional advertising has struggled? It's because it's trackable, it's measurable. So as an industry that's largely analog about face-to-face, -face, we have to mirror that. We have to create also trackable experiences for those exhibitors. So what are exhibitors doing? They're harvesting data digitally. So they understand through a variety of technologies um, who they've attracted, who are the attendees that they've spoken to, what are their profiles, and also importantly, understanding who they haven't spoken to. And can you do audience profiling? If I understand who my attendee base was who was attracted to my presence at a show, I can also do some profiling examples to see who did I not get when they came to the show floor, and then I can do post-show marketing to those folks. So it's really critical that the exhibitor harvests that data digitally so they can act upon it post-show. They also have to understand some of their key metrics like return on engagement, uh, social reach, return on objectives. You can only do that when you have a data underpinning. And many, exhibi many exhibitors, as I'm sure you know, don't. They're here for brand building, they're here just to maintain a presence, and there's no active collection of leads. Now, this just shows that there is a great opportunity for some of the new digitally oriented platforms that create data exhaust to sit alongside some of the old. And what I'm gonna do next is I, I, I wanna talk about this triumvirate in a, in, a, in a clear example. I'm gonna show you a brief two minute video of a typical visitor journey at an event. It happens to be at a show in London called Event Tech Live, but you will see this visitor going through and basically shopping the show. And I want you to pay attention to a couple of things as you watch this, this brief two minute video. One, I want you to, to observe the journey that she's on and to think about how that journey is enhanced by some of these digital tools. But secondly, really importantly, as event people, 
I want you to understand and think about the data exhaust that is being developed as she goes through this process, as she goes through this journey, as she, as she uh, shops this show. And, uh, and then we're gonna talk about each of those in turn. So I'm gonna roll the video now. So there was the journey. Um, we're gonna talk about very briefly a couple of key points throughout it. So you saw the pre-event registration period is really important. Why? From a data perspective. Again, what we're talking about here is how data enhances the event experience. If you're collecting pre-registration information, demographic information, psychographic information, you create a rich data profile of that particular attendee that is then attached to their to their badge and we can then understand what you saw in the video, right? How she went through and shopped the, the show. So you can see here as well, at one point in the video, the visitor was basically selecting content. She was checking in to certain exhibitors, downloading product information and creating a data exhaust trail based on what she was interested in. That was great for her because she went back to her hotel room and you saw she was able to then see and relive the experience that she had on the show floor. So it allows us to then create a much longer 365 day show experience. What happened for the exhibitor? The exhibitor found out what that particular visitor was interested in. So they can do effective post-show marketing and they can plan their stand and their experience better for the next year. At the organizer level, the organizer was looking at macro level data. They then were able to understand what was popular what product categories were popular, and that would allow them to then, for example, attract different exhibitors for a future show. You also saw scanning, right? More traditional lead capture scanning. So the exhibitor was also scanning this attendee, checking her in, that's creating a data trail. That's a much more active type of scanning experience. But again, the visitor was able to get digital information directed um, directly to her. You saw she was checking into a session, much like, like here. If you understand which visitors were going to which sessions, it could prove participation. For example, when you need to give uh, partici participation credits, it also allows the organizer to understand who's attending what and to then be able to plan the uh, content differently for a future year. Ultimately though, and this is the beauty of our industry, you saw several occasions during her experience where there was something physical happening, right? Shaking hands, meeting people, doing business face-to-face. -face. And that's ultimately why I believe 
that data and digital just enhances the physical experience. And then finally, what you're able to see is then the visitor engaging, going back to the office, going back to her hotel, and being able to engage with that information. So that digital information lives longer than the physical experience on the show floor. The event lasts 365 days, which is really what every show organizer is looking for. Post-show evaluation can then be done. It gives the organizer and exhibitor rich information. As I mentioned before, it allows the exhibitor to be much more uh, tactical and strategic about what information they are going to share in future shows. It allows the organizer to be much more strategic in planning a future show floor. And you can take that data to the next level for a more insight-led discussion afterwards. So hopefully that gives you a good overview of some of the things that we can do in terms of bringing data together to create a more enhanced show floor experience. There are different ways to present the data, uh, dashboards, um, portals, things like that. Many organizers are now looking at creating benchmark information for exhibitors. And finally, just in summary, um, data is, is, is not going away. And as Casper said in the session before me, it's about trust and it's about collecting that data in a sensible way. But hopefully you can see through these experiences how data can enhance the visitor's experience on the show floor, how it can create a more strategic opportunity for the show organizer um, to create a more effective show experience, and how the exhibitor can then use that data to market to their leads in a more effective way. Thank you very much. There's a lot more information about data. Um, you can go to a lot of websites. UFI, for example, which is one of our industry associations for the exhibitions industry, has a lot of information. You can also reach out to me, and you can follow me on Twitter. And uh, thank you very much for your time and attention today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your Efforts. Okay. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. it.